A-A-C-F-T, when I get to heaven, I don't worry about anything but worshiping. And so I know that there's some uh, prophetic utterances in this passage that reminds me that there will come a day where I will not have any worries. I know that people want to make those promises to God's people now. I don't want you to have any worries now. But friends, no one can make that promise to you. Repeat after me, I'm getting old. Yeah, you're going to break down. Your body's in a state of decay. You're going to have problems. Oh, I don't receive that. You don't have to. You're going to have problems. You're dying. I'm not, I'm not living forever. There will be a place where I live forever, but that's not here. So my hope isn't in America or in, in this flesh. My hope is in the eternal kingdom. So when I read these prophetic promises, I know what God is really saying to me, that if I have Christ, I have every promise that's being made here. But if I don't have Christ, I need to be afraid, very afraid. So it says in verse 10, No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. God, just help me to do what you've called me to do. Repeat after me. Help me to do what you called me to do. And I don't know what he's called you to do. But ask him to help you. Why? Because I know that there's safety when you and I are obeying the Lord. When we're walking by faith and not by sight, I know that there is safety. When you are being obedient to his call, I know God will have your back. Why? Because I can't make promises that if I go my own way, everything will be okay. But I do know this, that if I trust in him with all of my heart and don't rely on my own understanding, acknowledge him in all my ways, he's going to direct my path. NIV says, and he will make your path straight. See, my tendency is to go my own way. That's my flesh's tendency. Lonnie, what will make you happy? What, will, what seems right to you? That is my tendency. I don't know what your tendency is. But what this passage does, it goes, takes me back to a place of being anchored where it's like, Lonnie, you over here is safety. God is saying, no, you better stay under my wings. You're, you're, you're going too far into the sun. You better get back under my wings. You know, there's something about being in God's presence that is transformative. There are people that will tell you, you'll hear like preachers, you know, you'll hear people give these amazing stories, testimonies they might call them, but these amazing stories about these encounters with God, but the encounters don't transform them. You read the Bible, someone has an encounter with God, Isaiah 6, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. The Bible says he was in a coma. He saw God, but he was comatose. He couldn't move. But someone else will tell you, I was in the presence of God, and we were sipping Mai Tais, and and we were hanging out, and we were fist bumping. Really? Is that that what was happening? He said, Isaiah said, I got in the presence of God, and I saw how dirty I was, how unclean I was, and the people around me, unclean. But we get in the presence of God, and God, oh, God's telling me I'm good. God's telling me, good job, Lonnie. Hang in there. You're doing fine. You know what it's like to be in the presence of God under his wings, under his protection, but under his direction? You're not getting holy high fives that you're good and you're okay. You're in his presence, and just the presence of God, you're like, oh, woe is me. I am unclean. I am unworthy. But America, we have this idea that, you know, I'm I'm hanging out with God and he's my homeboy. That's not God. That's a God. That's not the God. Why? Because when we're in the presence of God, we're brought low. Why? Because of his majesty, his majestic nature. And we see some of that. We see some of that in here. He protects and defends in verse 11, and he guards us in all of our ways as we obey him and serve him. It says in 12, they will lift you up in their hands so that you do not even strike your foot against the stone. You know, Hebrews tells us this, that uh, God gives an angel to everyone who will believe that everyone is provided an angel. You know, this idea of a guardian angel, Hebrews tells us. Everyone who believes has an angel. You know, this idea of of, of God uh, releasing divine resources on your behalf is not a false idea, and it's not a Hollywood notion. God cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about your suffering. We see this with the prophets, and even even, even as, as we look through the scriptures, how God would show up and rescue his people who are in great suffering and great adversity and dealing with great difficulty. God shows up. 
And this is a passage to remind you that when things get tough, don't give up. When things get hard, don't give in. When things get scary, don't run. Don't, don't turn and go your own way. But keep trusting that God will show up and God will deliver and God will heal. So it says in just these last few verses, verse 13, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent will trample you underfoot. Um, because he set his love on me, therefore I will save him. First, let me say this. Don't go around playing with snakes and lions. Let's say that first. There are churches that actually do that. They come together and they're passing around rattlesnakes and drinking cyanide and things like that. This is your public service announcement. Do not do this at home or anywhere else. The, The Bible says that we are not to tempt the Lord God. We're not to tempt him. Right. And so this idea that that uh, if I step on a cobra, that's different than me playing with cobras. The Bible doesn't encourage us to play with snakes. Just doesn't do it. I'm not joking about this. The Bible does not tell us to just go out and start playing with lions and and snakes. I saw a video one time. The man had raised some lions and and then they were like, hey, let's see if they recognize them a year later. Okay, okay, maybe. Things worked out. The man is still alive, but I'm not going out there. Lion doesn't know me, right? He wasn't, I didn't raise the cub. So this idea that that, uh, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot is this picture that what used to control you in terms of your sinful nature and your brokenness will no longer have dominion over you. Those things that used to to cause you to give into despair, now I have this new life in Christ where I can stand under this shadow where those things don't have dominion. Now, you'll have to take a stand at some point. You'll have to take a stand when you struggle with things like depression or, or anger or, or loneliness, these, these things that, that you might struggle with. You'll have to decide, am I going to trust God or am I going to give into this thing that I feel so deeply? But you do have power over them in Christ. You have authority to be free in Christ, not outside of him, but in him. Otherwise, we we stand on our own and we stand abandoned to just simply suffer. But God says he's not going to abandon you to your suffering and to your pain. He says he's going to be with us. Now, he may not show up in the moment you demand, but he will show up. He may not show up the way you anticipate, but he will show up. This is what it really means to trust God. God, I don't know when, how, what. I don't know the way you're going to do it, but I trust you're going to show up. Repeat after me. God, I trust you. Because he set his love on me, therefore I will save him. I will set him securely on high because he knows my name. He confidently trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never abandon him. No, never. I don't know if you really believe that about God, that he will never abandon you. But your salvation, your eternity depends on it. Is God going to come back and take you to heaven or not? Are you going to be resurrected, either alive or dead? Are you going to be resurrected when Jesus returns? Do you believe that? That's the hope of the Christian, that one day we will be with him in eternity. Do you actually believe that? How could I believe that and not believe that he cares about me right now? I will set him securely on high because he knows my name, and he confidently trusts and relies on me, knowing I will never abandon him, no, never. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will say, this passage goes on and on about what God will do in the life of all of those who trust him. Who trust him. If I said to you, hey, I got $100 for everybody, and I winked my eye, is that a trustworthy statement? Probably not. I wink my eye. I have my fingers crossed. My toes are crossed, right? (laughs) Trustworthy. Someone says, I love you. Is it trustworthy? You know, the trust in most cases, has to be demonstrated, right? It, you know, it's like you have to prove it to me. And I know why we kind of place that thought on God, like, God, you have to prove it to me. God, I, I want you to demonstrate. I don't know what more you need from God to demonstrate his trustworthiness, but I would say he's probably done enough, right? 
When I go back to a passage like this, it's like the reminder, I will be with him in trouble. Yep, God, you've been with me in trouble. Yeah, you've been with me when things were difficult. I will rescue him. Okay, God, you have definitely rescued me. I will call upon you and you will answer. Yep, I've called upon you, God. You've answered. I don't know what else God needs to do, but most importantly, he saved me. (laughs) Another thing the church mothers would say is, you know, it... God, 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 if you don't do another thing for me, you've done enough. Now, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that salvation is the greatest gift that God could ever give you and saving you is enough if he never answers another prayer? Do you believe that? That's hard. That's hard faith, right? God, if you never give me another request, the fact that you saved me is the most important reality in my spiritual life. And this is hard to get to that place, but it's the place. I, with long life, I will satisfy him, and I will let him see my salvation. Look, salvation is in Christ. It's this place that we get to when we, when, when we recognize in our journey that in order to live, in order to have life, I can't have it in myself. My body's betraying me. I'm breaking down. I'm not getting smarter. Rachel's been playing these jokes on me, talking about, oh, you might need memory care because I forgot something, right? And so, 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 you know, your, your mind's betraying you at some point, and uh, because you're not getting better, you're getting worse. We're in a state of decay. How much more do we need to be trusting the Lord in this state of decay? How much more do we need to be hungry and thirsty for God to show up in this state of decay? I want you to think about this passage, and I want you to think about this passage as there is great security in those who trust in the Lord. Great security, hope, joy, peace. For those who trust in the Lord, is life perfect? No. Do things always go our way? does not. Do we always get what we want the way we want it? Nope. You have good days, you have bad days, but there is security if I stay connected to him. My hand in his hand. I want you to bow your heads for just a moment. I want you to just take stock or stake in your spiritual life right now, and I want you to think about where you are in your spiritual journey. Is God the pilot or is he your co-pilot? Remember this. If God is your co-pilot, then you have a fool for a pilot. God should not be the co-pilot. God should be the pilot. Where you lead me, I will follow. Just take a moment. God, do I confidently trust and hope in you? God, do I declare of you that you are my refuge and my fortress? God, do I intentionally and willfully remain under your wings? Just take a moment. Are you controlled by fear and terror? Take a moment to consider where you are with the Lord. Spiritual journey can be difficult, filled with uncertainty. But even as we were reminded in Psalm 142, I cried to the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me out of my trouble. Church, God will show up. He will deliver. He will help. He will heal. He will protect, he will provide, 
He will provide shelter and safety and security because we've made the Lord our refuge. Father, speak to your people. Allow us to confess our faults, our sins. Help us to surrender our will to your will. Help us to remain humble. May we never demand you or tell you or declare to you, but help us to receive from you with open hands, open heart. Father, we pray for those that are struggling this morning, those that need a a touch from you, those that need help from you. We pray, dear Lord, that you would meet every need. You are the great I am. We're thankful and we're grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. While Rachel and I were away, we, we stayed in uh, an Airbnb, and the Airbnb did not belong to us. It was not our dwelling place. It was not our refuge. It wasn't our bed, our linen, our towels. None of that was ours. A lot of people approach their spiritual life like an Airbnb. The things we do, the places we go, the way we behave, we're behaving not like we're experiencing true refuge, uh, living in a true dwelling place. We're so caught up in the things of this world. We couldn't wait to get back to our place of safety. You see, when you're with the Lord, you're in a place of safety. When you're away from the Lord, you should know you're not at home. You're in a hotel. This isn't home. But God is a place of refuge for your life, not for a moment, not just because you need him today, but for the entirety of your life. God's not a vacation. He's your life, your existence. And so when, when, when you are experiencing God as a refuge and a dwelling place, that's the security and comfort of being at home. You're, it's familiar territory. You and I should never get comfortable with with. Airbnbs, because I started looking around as soon as I got there. You know they have little cameras now. You, you just don't know. You might say, that's a bit paranoid. Trust me, it's not. It's not the security of home. When I get home, I know I'm safe. When you're with God, you are safe. The world wants you to doubt that. The evil one wants you to doubt that. People, family, friends, that don't know the Lord, they want you to doubt that you are safe with him. But friends, when you are with God, you are safe. And he is asking for your trust. Your eternity is in his hands. Trust him. Your joy is in his hands. Trust him. Your hope is in his hands. Trust him. Don't lean on your own understanding. When in doubt, trust the Lord. When in doubt, run to the shadow When in doubt, make God your dwelling place. Not a moment in time, but how you live your life. Why? Difficult seasons will come. And when you're connected to him, you'll make it through. When you're not connected to him, you'll kind of be like the the, the Pharaoh and his army to get washed away in the sea because you think you know better. Trust the Lord and everything in your life will be as it ought to be. Walk by faith not by sight, and everything in your life will be as it ought to be. Father, as we leave here today, I pray, Father, for your hand of blessing and protection. I pray that you'd watch over us. I pray, dear Lord, for every family that's represented here. I pray, Father, that you would speak to us and that you would move in us and through us. There is none like you. You are the great I am, and you are high and lifted up. We thank you for your promises, uh, your promise to protect us, your promise to shelter us, your promise to be refuge for us, your promise to hear us in our time of trouble and our time of need. We thank you, dear Lord, because whatever evil may come against us, There's no enemy that's greater than you, no force that's greater than you, no decision maker that is greater than you. So we put our hope, 
and we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say amen.